Hi guys, welcome to Joe's RC Corner, and today we're back on the Zenith build. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so welcome back to the channel. Uh, wanted to do a little bit different of a video today. Just wanted to go over a little bit about what we're doing, uh, why I chose the Zenith Cruiser, and uh, what we're going to be doing in regards to uh, paint, and uh, go from there. So, uh, we do have a little bit of work to do on the plane, so we will be getting to that, and that will probably be a time lapse, uh, but I did want to just touch base a little bit on what we're getting done. Uh, so, um, I'm going to insert a picture here. This is going to be the color scheme uh, on this airplane. I want to go with a little bit of a rugged look. Um, so I'm going with a commemorative um, paint scheme reminiscent of the L4 Grasshopper. So we're going with an olive drab uh, color scheme with D-Day stripes and um, the stars and bars back here on the tail section uh, and also on the wing. We want to uh, go ahead and uh, paint this aircraft with an olive drab paint. Uh, I found a, uh, a, a, an automotive polyurethane paint. Uh, it's a single stage paint that uh, came and had very decent reviews. I'll put the link in the description if you guys are interested in it. Um, I've never painted anything with an air gun before. So I'm going to do a little bit of practice before I start painting on this. Uh, but the reason why I went ahead and purchased the paint now is a lot of guys out there were mentioning that that the inside of this area, um, the cabin area, I should probably paint prior to assembling that whole front section and attaching it to the tail section. And I tend to agree with that. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to get in there and do that now uh, than it will be later on. So, we're going to get that painted as soon as that stuff comes in, uh, but in the meantime, we're going to continue to keep moving um, and uh, working on getting all these parts, uh, such as the, the stab uh, mount. We're going to get that um, uh, prepped and mounted, painted, primed underneath it, and so on, where all those metal parts meet. Uh, now, the primer for this aircraft, I'm using a two-part epoxy uh, primer from the same brand uh, that I'm getting the paint from. Um, I figured if they're selling it together, it should be compatible um, per the information on the website. So I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, it should be um, because I looked at uh, kit plane enthusiasts. Uh, Mark went ahead and he did a two part epoxy primer on his. Now he used uh, a different brand, but uh, essentially they're. Two-part epoxy, two-part epoxy uh, primer should be fairly the same. So uh, I did order two gallons uh, of the paint, hoping that should be enough. If not, I can order another gallon as I need to. But um, two gallons should cover this whole airplane with the olive drab after it's primed. Uh, same with the wings and so on. Um, I only got a gallon of the white and black for the D-Day stripes because that's, you know, it's not a lot of that on there. Uh, so should be fine. Um, let me think what else. Uh, the interior on the floor though, I think I'm going to go with a, uh, I found a spray style uh, bed liner style paint. And I think I'm going to do the floors in that, uh, give it a nice rugged look. Um, and uh, I'm probably going to go with something like a, uh, a wood grip, basically a World War II style um, you know, kind of leather interior. Uh, that's what I'm going with also is a, I'm going to do a leather interior uh, for the seats, a brown leather, and uh, maybe some uh, wood accents and so on. Uh, I think that would look really nice in this airplane. Um, that way, it'll also look really good without wheel pants. And uh, I've, I've had wheel pants on RC airplanes, and I know a lot of guys have uh, wheel pants on their main, on their full-size airplanes. And uh, they always had issues with them, so I'm not going to bother with wheel pants. They don't gain that much airspeed with the airplane. Plus, this is just going to be a fun airplane to fly around with anyway, so I'm not really that concerned about that part. So, that's what we're going with. Um, 
I hope you guys like it. If not, it's fine. It's my airplane, and I like it, and that's all that matters. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get back to work, and let's start working on the uh, the Zenith Cruiser build. So, thanks guys for joining me, and I'll see you at the end of the video, after the time lapse of getting some of this work done. guys so welcome back to the channel after the uh, time lapse of what we got done uh, I hope most of that time lapse came through if you're watching this it probably did uh, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the camera I'm gonna show you a little bit of work that I did to the fuselage over here uh, I did uh, most of the stuff has been clecoed in place uh, I did get a little bit of riveting done but not a whole lot because there's a lot more stuff that needs to go in there before I finalize any of that riveting, uh, such as controls. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a quick look, turn the camera around, let you guys see what we got done. Okay, guys, so uh, hopefully the lighting works out pretty good here. Uh, but this is all just clecoed in place. We got the back wall clecoed in place. Uh, that's of the baggage area. Uh, the baggage, kind of like a seat area, but it's not really a seat, guys, because this is the cruiser, not the Super Duty. So uh, this is just a, a, a way to get everything raised up because the access panel is right down under there, which will lead you into that back area. So behind this wall, uh, we're going to have most likely the header tank for the Viking engine. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what side that's going to be on, but uh, we'll have a header tank in there um, and, uh, of course, the controls that are going to go uh, through the fuselage here. Uh, this is just the control uh, tunnel. So the elevator flapper on control is all going to go through this area here. Um, and then, of course, we do have the flapper on uh, servo controller uh, or mount. Uh, right here, which will uh, get that mounted wires then come up through this area and up through the front uh, We did get the flapper on aileron control uh, box right in here So this is the control box uh, for the control arms. It's uh, basically a shield to keep things from getting tangled up in that we have the shoulder harness uh, mount for the top on both sides one over there as well and then of course this panel is the same thing and these are just clear coat in place I ran out of primer so uh, I'm gonna have to get some primer to complete this section this section and these before these get permanently mounted now of course this is not going to be closed up this front section um, so this front section here that wraps around that is not going to be closed up uh, until the control rods are, are all fished through and completed uh, so that's that there uh, same I do still have to drill the holes I have to back drill holes right along here to attach this piece 
to the top of the fuselage. Uh, so we'll worry about that uh, probably another day. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is really coming along nicely. It's a pretty straightforward build uh, so far. I'm pretty happy with the construction quality. Uh, the other part we did is we did prime the back side of these and also where it mates to the fuselage here is also primed right here as well. And then this is just clico in place right now. I cannot uh, rivet this back section here until I get the elevator pulleys. One of them gets mounted inside there and the other one mounted up on the top. Uh, which then feeds over the stab through the vertical stabilizer and uh, so it goes over the stab and uh, then to the elevator over here where the counterweight is inside that vertical stabilizer so that'll be the next things uh, um, following the plans of course uh, so we're in this area here right now and uh, following the directions in regards to what rivets are used. And then, like I said, these are all just clico to in place and primed right now uh, until I get to that stage. Uh, getting ready to mount that. So, um, I'm not sure we're going to make my goal of getting this on wheels before the 4th of January, but we are going to make the best attempt. Um, with just being careful on what stuff we uh, rivet together because we don't want to rivet something together that we will then need to drill out. Um, but guys, don't feel bad about having to drill out rivets. Um, everyone, <laughs> everyone eventually has to drill out a rivet or two, sometimes more. Um, it's not a big deal. It's easy to uh, go ahead and drill one out and then uh, re-rivet. So don't get uh, discouraged by making mistakes like that. Um, rivets are easy to take out and put new ones back in. So any, anyways, oh yeah, and Happy New Year, guys, because this video will probably come out pretty close to the new year. So Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, hopefully 2021 has a little bit better uh, situation coming along. Uh, so guys, that's all we got for today. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe when you, if you like the content that I'm producing here. And uh, make sure you hit that bell so you get notified of the next video. So, see you on the next video, guys. Bye now.